Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Distance Default with a ZPH. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make basic distance default measurements using the Rodin Schwartz ZPH cable and antenna analyzer. This presentation covers the essential information needed to make basic distance default measurements with the ZPH. But please see the separate presentation, Understanding VNA's Distance Default Measurements, if you'd like more detailed information on this topic. Let's start with a brief overview of distance default. Distance default measurements provide the location of possible faults in a transmission line or cable. These can be due to cable breaks, bad connectors, corrosion, animal chews, etc. Signal reflections will occur wherever these faults are located, and we can use a vector network analyzer or cable and antenna analyzer to make distance default measurements. At a high level, this is done by injecting a signal into the cable under test, and then measuring the reflections in the frequency domain. An inverse fast Fourier transform, or IFFT, is used to convert this frequency domain information into the time domain. These time domain results are plotted as amplitude versus distance from the measurement point. In some cases, the relative amplitude of the fault can also provide information as to the nature of the fault, or the cause of the reflection. There are six basic steps in making distance default measurements. Configuring the tracking generator, connecting the cable, setting the cable model and length, defining the measurement parameters, performing a one-port calibration, and viewing and or analyzing the results. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go through each of these step by step. On the ZPH, distance default measurements are made in cable and antenna mode. To enter this mode, press the mode hard key on the front of the ZPH and then choose cable and antenna from the list of available options. Next, press the measure hard key and select DTF in order to configure and run distance default measurements. The ZPH's internal tracking generator or signal source is configured by pressing the scale amplitude hard key and then selecting TG power from the menu. Note that the tracking generator power can also be viewed and edited directly from the main ZPH screen. The maximum configurable output power is 0 dBm. Care should be taken not to set the tracking generator output power level too low, since this can lead to inaccurate measurement results for cables with high loss. To make DTF measurements, the far end of the cable under test must be terminated into a well-matched or roughly 50 ohm load. This load may be a CAL standard, a dummy load, or an antenna that is resonant at the measurement frequency. Erroneous distance default measurements are often caused by a failure to terminate the far end of the cable. The near end of the cable can be connected directly to the ZPH's RF output port, or the cable can be connected using a short high quality DUT or device under test cable. A DUT cable may be helpful when the near end of the cable under test is difficult to access. Using a DUT cable also helps to avoid strain on or damage to the analyzer connector. As we'll see in a few minutes, the effect of this DUT cable can be removed as part of the calibration process. The next step is specifying a cable model. Coaxial cables with different conductor spacings and different dielectrics will propagate signals at different speeds. This is called the velocity factor of a cable. They will also have different amounts of attenuation, which is a function of frequency. Therefore, accurate distance default measurements require the specification of a cable model, which describes both the velocity factor and the frequency-specific loss of the cable under test. The ZPH comes preloaded with a large number of models for the most common cable types. These can be chosen using DTF bandwidth cable model and then pressing load. The selected cable model is displayed on the top of the distance default results screen. It's also possible to create a custom or user-defined cable model. This can be done directly on the ZPH itself, or it can be created on a PC using the free Instrument View software. To create a cable model on the ZPH, press DTF Bandwidth, Cable Config, and User Settings. There are three configuration parameters. Recall that Velocity Factor describes the speed of propagation in the cable, 
which is specified as a fraction of the speed of light. Typical values are either 66% or, less often, 82%. This value is independent of frequency. The cable loss, or attenuation, is specified as paired values of frequency and attenuation, that is, n dB at x hertz. The ZPH will interpolate between entered values. When done, press User Model to apply the settings. In addition to the cable model, the approximate length of the cable must also be entered. This is done by pressing the Frequency Distance hard key and then choosing Start Distance and Stop Distance. The main reason why cable length must be specified is that the length is used to determine the measurement span or frequency range. The longer the cable, the smaller the measurement span. We'll look at this in more detail on the next slide. The other reason why cable length must be entered is that it's used to determine the display limits on the results. If the length is set too short, then we won't be able to see any cable faults beyond this distance. Setting the length too long is also undesirable, since any results past the end distance will not be reliable. In most distance default measurement applications, the approximate cable length is known, but if the length has to be estimated, it's usually best to err on the side of overestimating the cable length. Modern distance default analyzers measure by sweeping the generator over a frequency range, and this range is referred to as the span. This span, in turn, is centered around a center frequency. The span and center frequency must be defined, and in DTF measurements, the recommendation is to set the span first. Span is configured by pressing the Frequency Distance Hard key, and then DTF Span. In most cases, this can be left as Auto, which calculates the optimal span for the best length resolution, although span can also be manually configured. Note that the configured cable distance will limit the maximum span. After span has been configured, use DTF Center Frequency to set the center of the span. There are a few additional parameters that can be configured. The Sweep Hard key brings up two important settings. The first is the number of measurement or trace points. More points provides greater detail, especially over wide frequency ranges. The other sweep-related parameter is toggling between the default continuous sweep and single sweep. In addition, the reference level and vertical scale can be configured by pressing the Scale Amplitude Hard key and then adjusting the related parameters. Note that automatic scaling of these values is also supported. After configuring parameters, the next step is to perform a one-port calibration. This process involves sequentially attaching an open, a short, and a match, or load, to the location where the cable under test will be connected. These standards can be in the form of discrete standards, or may be combined into a calibration T. In addition to these manually attached standards, electronic calibration units can also be used. These units switch their internal standards in and out automatically and are controlled by the ZPH. Regardless of which type of standards are used, the process is started by pressing the Cal Span Hard key, Full One Port, and selecting the calibration kit. Then simply follow the prompts to run the calibration process. If the cable under test will be directly connected to the ZPH, then the calibration standards or calibration unit should also be connected directly to the RF output on the ZPH. If, on the other hand, a DUT cable is used between the ZPH and the cable under test, then the calibration standards are connected to the end of the DUT cable. Attaching the calibration standards to the end of the DUT cable removes the effect of the DUT cable from the measurement result. After disconnecting the calibration standards or unit and attaching the cable under test, the distance default measurement will run automatically. Here we see a typical measurement result showing two potential faults in the cable. The start and stop distances are shown along the bottom of the screen, as are the center frequency and span. Distance default measurements can also be displayed in numeric or tabular form. This is done by using the DTF bandwidth hard key. First, use DTF threshold to define the minimum level in dB that should be considered a fault. 
In this case, we've chosen minus 45 dB, and this threshold is shown on the display as a blue horizontal line. If DTF list is then selected, a table showing peak number, distance, and return loss is displayed. Here we see two peaks, one at 9.8 meters with a return loss of about 42 dB, and the second at 15.7 meters with a return loss of about 22 dB. Markers are enabled using the marker hard key, and these can be used to numerically quantify DTF faults or events. Up to six markers can be placed on a trace, and these can be either absolute markers or delta markers, which show the difference between marker values. You can toggle between types using marker type. The functions provided under set marker can be used to automatically place markers on peak or minimum values of the displayed trace. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodin Schwartz ZPH cable and antenna analyzer can be used to make distance default measurements, and these provide information about faults on an attached cable. These faults are typically defined as return loss less than a user-specified value. In order to perform a distance default measurement, the user must specify a cable model or type of cable, as well as the length of the cable. In addition, the span and center frequency of the measurement must be given, although span can be determined automatically by the ZPH. When making distance default measurements, it's important to remember that the far end of the cable must be terminated into a well-matched load or resonant antenna. Accurate DTF measurements also require a valid one-port calibration. Measurement results are usually displayed in the form of a graph, showing return loss as a function of distance although faults can be also shown in tabular format. And finally, markers can be used on the trace results to obtain more precise numeric values. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Distance Default with a ZPH. If you'd like more information about network measurements, distance default measurements, or network analyzers from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.